Charlotte Log 116, July 29th, 2020. Mastering Monotony. This is the second video in our weeks long study of Summa Vritti. And now I want to introduce a layer of subtlety. This is a lot. What I'm going to attempt to put into language is some perception that I didn't even start to bring online until at least 10 years into very serious practice and study. So this is going to be a lot. I'm just going to drop a few breadcrumbs. But I want to be open and generous about this stuff because it's so awesome. So we've been studying some of Ritti from a subjective standpoint, right? So this is kind of the first cut into really becoming a master of your own energy. Some of Ritti is equal inhalation, equal exhalation. Same, same. You include the pauses at the bottom and the top of the breath as part of the soma, right? So this is monotony. Inhale up, exhale down, same, same. It is so important that the governor of the monotony be subjective. You are not trying to force yourself into yoga robot status as a sort of uh, sum of Ritti machine that can be measured externally by a metronome with exact objective inhalation, exhalation, sameness. The more you go into this practice, and if you understand the philosophy behind it, there is a lot of doubt that comes up about the nature of time and its variability anyway. We're going for subjective summa. That said, that takes a lot of work because most of us begin with terrible equanimity. We have nervous system level, hormonal level imbalance that causes us to deeply overemphasize the inhale or the exhale to hold on the inhale or the exhale, and we actually have to, from an interior standpoint, notice the ways in which we can bring ourselves into more of a balance of same same in the relationship to the inhale and the exhale. Those of you who have practiced a lot with my mentor, Dominic, you know that he's actually got this real connection with the, the patience that we can bring to the inhale. So once you practice a while and you move through that couple of years where you're like bearing down on the exhale, very often the inhale also needs to learn to even out. He's incredible at an embodied transmission, sort of how that feels. It's so hard to put some of this into language because you really have to take the time and the years on the mat to understand the governing of the monotony level of the practice. What we did in LED today was we did two of the Surya Namaskar with a purely objective count. Five second inhale, five second exhale. And I could actually see, because I'm in rapport with all of you, the, the ways that that was actually not correct for you. It's not correct for me either. The role of the teacher here is to, to have so much rapport with the group, so much empathetic connection and embodied knowledge of your rhythms, that as a teacher you can be, I always feel like a little statistician, because I have statistics training. I'm thinking of sort of how do I use my subjective knowledge. I'm not actually trying to be a physical metronome. I'm at a subjectively, intersubjectively connected metronome. So I'm empathically in rapport with each of you. And my work is to bring us all a little closer to the same rhythm. So I'm not a yoga robot either. And I'm not teaching you to be exactly 
five second inhale, five second exhale. Like we're not like soldiers on a training ground for God's sakes, right? This is a, an organism and it's organic in its way of coming together. So this is the art and science of lead. And you have to be in rapport with, with the group to channel rather than to like lead from some sort of authoritarian perspective, which would be more mechanical, right? So the move for me, and I've learned this from you, and after I learned this from you, I spent two months studying the Count with Shara in Mysore, and he put beautiful language to what I've learned in rapport from you. And that is that you count in a way that's right at the center of the group. For example, we get into Mari Chiasana C. Half of the students are there waiting for me to say one. Half of them are struggling, getting into the posture. We're all in the pause at the top of the inhale. I say one right at the center line of the group, sort of statistically figuring out when the person, the median person, is in the posture. Right, So it slows down the faster students and it speeds up the slower students because I'm actually voicing the vibe of the collective, right? bringing us all into some of routine. We know there's such a, a bonding that happens when we sync the nervous systems. That's the function of a teacher in a correctly understood light class, not to force you into some sort of militaristic version of same same but to bring us all into a shared rapport, which you already have on an individual level with me. Um, there's so much to say about the art of lead class. That's just a tiny little taste. It's beautiful. I hope this communicates a little bit of why I'm so uh, excited about it. I want to say one more thing, another level of subtlety that we're just starting to add in words which many of you have had for years. So samavritti is the aspect of monotone in the vinyasa system. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Over time learning to dissolve the preferences you have for inhale or exhale, for holding or or grasping for breath, and from an interior standpoint, bringing yourself into equanimity. That is what I mean when I say mastery of monotony. You should all be doing it. But this method is rhythms within rhythms within rhythms within rhythms within rhythms. And one of the expressions of that principle is in the lead class, you've got monotony which is all we've been doing on Wednesday, is I'm giving you the monotone so you can regulate yourself within that monotone to a higher level. Notice how you relate to the subjective collective monotone that is expressed through my count. And regulate yourself. But there's also the rhythm of monotone is there to contain another rhythm of prosody. And the prosody shows up, and most of you have taught me this by showing me how your body responds to the lilting aspects of my voice, to the inhale up, exhale down, right? The ways that when I'm doing the Sanskrit count and I'm enunciating the names of the postures, there's a variability in the language and in the energy. And it's really seeing how we respond to each other when we're in rapport. When my, when my voice does both the monotone of the count and the prosody of the postural names and the Sanskrit count that showed me this rhythm of the monotony within the prosody of the whole sort of lead practice. The prosody corresponds to this really important variability that most of you are aware of already and I want to make explicit because I think naming it will give you even more energy around your awareness, and that is the heart rate. Heart rate variability is something that is built in to the practice. The practice is designed to increase the variability of your heart rate 
in a super healthy way. You are not trying to get the heart rate into a monotone. Absolutely not. And you'll notice that. Those of you who are in a deep subjective relationship already with your heart rate, it's constantly in variability. If you wanted an external aid to become aware of the heart rate, if you weren't in Ashtangi and you didn't have this amazing practice to give you that, you could go to the Heart Math Institute and they equip people with heart rate monitors that train their subjective minds to be constantly aware of the heart rate variability and to begin to have some subconscious governing control of that heart rate variability, especially when it gets into the high ranges and needs to actually slow itself down. Once somebody has a biofeedback monitor um, on their heart rate, very often the subjective control keeps them out of those sort of danger ranges just because that biofeedback is constantly talking to their subjective or their deep mind. We already have that kind of uh, awareness installed once we're ready to place the attention on it in the practice. And this is where there is variability within the monotony of the breath. The breath rate and the heart rate are two very different dances. And this is one of these aspects of rhythm within rhythm within rhythm. All I'm going to say about that for now is that heart rate variability and prosody move together in the practice when it comes to the lead, right? And so you learn to become a master of monotony in the breath so that over time you become highly conscious of the, the prosody or the variability in the heart rate. For now, those of you who have just heard this for the first time, I'll just say one thing. When you started Ashtanga Yoga, many of you went through this process of becoming meta-aware of your breath throughout the day. It's amazing. It changes your life. It gives you space. It gives you spirit in your everyday dealings with the 3D world. Um, that's somewhat enlightening. So go through the same process in heart rate awareness. It will change your life. It's already changing your life, making it explicit can speed up that process and can also start to make the complexity of the dance of monotony and prosody even more beautiful to you. So, Samavritti is just the beginning. Mastering monotony is there so that you can appreciate the, the variability within it. All right. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to practice. See you soon.